All right, so um, this is probably the most popular dry fly. Uh, it's in the top 10 flies, it's probably in the top five flies that are uh, sold and used every year. It's called an elk hair caddis. Um, Al Troth came up with this years ago, um, and uh, it's been just phenomenally successful. Uh, we use this on creeks, we use it in the river, we use it on lakes. Uh, it pretty much catches fish wherever. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna tie this on a dry fly hook. So that's gonna be standard wire, sometimes one extra light wire, standard length. Uh, occasionally on dry fly hooks, I'll make them one extra long in the shank. Uh, the hook terminology, you can talk to the people at the fly store or look online and find a description of all the, all the different things about hooks. We could, we could talk about them for a couple of hours and still just barely scratch the surface. So um, this one happens to be a size 12. <laughs> I'm gonna put the hook in my vise again, try to keep that uh, level with the top. Uh, very similar to the woolly bugger that we just tied. Uh, however, this is a dry fly, so uh, we're going to start our thread and again, trying to keep that little minimum distance uh, hook eye back. Uh, get my thread started here, trim off the tag end, and I'm going to take it all the way to the very back uh, of the hook shank, right where the straight part starts to curve. The first thing that we're going to tie in on this is um, some hackle, uh, and this one is use, uses dry fly hackle. So I'm going to find a piece of this is a kind of chewed up uh, old saddle that I've had for had lots and lots of flies out of. Uh, so I'm going to kind of look and see if I've got about the right length one. <coughs> that one's a little small. Um, you can get hackle gauges that help help do this that one looks pretty good when they're already when they're still on the skin like this one is the easiest way to get these out is to fold them up against the grain and grab down at the base and just pull up and they'll pop right out of the saddle so um, instead of tying in at the tip like we did at the woolly bug we're going to tie in down here uh, toward the base so I want to look at it and if there's any web down here uh, that's going to prevent it from standing up really nice and straight so right here is about where the web ends, so I'm just going to clip it off right there. Um, and then what I like to do is to pull some of those so that they're sticking out both ways, and then take my scissors right down next to the stem on top and on bottom. And it makes little kind of catch points for the thread. So I'm going to tie this in um, right back here. And you use the pinch technique that we discussed earlier. Just get that lashed in pretty good. I like my thread out here uh, to do the next section. So with the elk hair caddis, we want to dub in a body. And all dubbing is is um, some hair or yarn. Uh, you can buy already blended dubbings. You can make your own, whatever. Um, and all it is is some little fibers that we're going to spin onto the thread. And when we spin them onto the thread, that stuff on the thread is called a dubbing noodle. The number two most uh, common mistake for beginning tires is using too much dubbing. So here's a huge glob of dubbing. And what I want to do is kind of fluff it out in my hand. And I want to just grab some of these little strands sticking out over here and pull them out. So uh, you can barely see that, I'm sure. But there's actually a lot of dubbing there. When I go to put that on, I'm going to set it on the thread. And I'm going to pinch it between my thumb and index finger. And I want to roll it in a clockwise fashion. If you roll it in a counterclockwise fashion, it's going to unwind as you twist the thread. When you're wrapping this thread, if you're right-handed, you're going to be putting a clockwise twist in the thread. So I'm just going to keep only spinning in a clockwise fashion when I spin this dubbing on there. And if you're having a little trouble with it, they sell all kinds of dubbing waxes and stuff. <clears throat> the easiest thing to do is just to dampen your fingers uh, with your tongue. Just get a little saliva on there. Uh, I know people that have a little wet sponge, but I don't think it's necessary. Uh, all these materials are typically sterilized, so I want to get a little bit of a dubbing noodle on there. And this is a fairly robust little fly, so um, so that's that's a pretty generous amount of dubbing. Uh, but I know kind of what I'm going for. I like to hold that down just a little bit. That's why I bring it up here when I'm doing it. And usually you can slide this up or down. So I want enough thread that I can wrap it back to my tie-in point. So now I have the dubbing starting right at the tie-in point, and I'm just going to dub forward with this. Uh, caddis have a, kind of a football-shaped body, not a 
really tapered body like a mayfly. And I'm just going to wrap that dubbing forward until uh, I get to right about there, probably three quarters of the way up the hook shank. At this point, we're going to do the same technique with the hackle that we did on the woolly bugger. We're going to, it's called palmering a hackle, which means spiraling it up from the back to the front. So I'm just going to spiral it forward. Again, I'm going to leave maybe, yeah, uh, being a science teacher, uh, this is a millimeter spacing probably, but it's five or six wraps up to the front. Get your hackle up there where it goes, hold it up, throw your thread over it, a couple of wraps of thread. Um, I like to pick the hackle up, get everything out of the way, put a couple wraps in front just to lock it down. At that point, use the technique where you just open your scissors a little bit, put them right over that, and just push forward and you can clip it off without clipping any extra stuff. So now we've got our uh, main part of our fly done. All we need is a hair wing on it, and uh, it's called an elk hair caddis for a reason. It uses some elk hair. Um, and the reason that we use elk hair, uh, all deer hair and elk or deer or moose, all deer hair is hollow. Um, elk happens to be less hollow than deer. Uh, the reason that that's important to us here is that when we put tension on it with the thread, it won't flare and stand straight up. It'll only flare and stand part way up, which we want a sloping back wing. So um, to do this, you're gonna need a hair stacker. It used to be you could take a chapstick tube and tear the bottom off, but they've changed the design of them, so you can't do that anymore. You can just go buy a little hair stacker someplace. Um, and you wanna take a, a chunk of this elk hair and just kind of bend it like this and, and get your fingers on a chunk, probably, probably about like that is probably about right. Um, you, you're going to have to experiment a little bit. It changes depending on the size of the fly. I like to clip it off as close to the hide as possible. When you do that, you'll notice if you hold toward the tips that there's all kinds of fuzz in this. Uh, that's the under fur. It's the insulation. So you want to pull all that out because it doesn't work very well. So just pinch it with your hand and pull it out. If you look, you can see uh, there's all kinds of little fluffy stuff in there and some short hairs. So I'm going to, I'm going to move out and hold kind of closer to the tips. And if there's any really short hairs, uh, you can see they're just coming out with the fuzz. Just get all that stuff out of there so it's nice and clean. Um, and we're going to stick that in tip first into the hair stacker. They make these flares so you can kind of stick it in and go around and around so they're all pointing the same way, let go of them. And then it's just a function of tapping it on the table. <laughs> a lot of times I like to use the edge and keep it a little sideways. Now the way these hair stackers work is this part doesn't go all the way to the bottom. So I'm going to hold it sideways, hold on to the top, and take the bottom off. And now you can see all my elk hair is in there and all the tips are even. So now I'm going to grab it with my left hand, right there, take it out of the hair stacker, and transfer it to my right hand. Again, using the crossing technique that packs it down more and more. This wing needs to go right back here to where we ended. So I'm just going to measure it right there. So I'm at the, exactly the right spot. Transfer hands. And I'm going to use the pinch technique. It's really tough with this hair because it's going to want to roll around the hook. So make sure that you get a good pinch technique on it once, twice. Keep a hold of the wing. Just slide your finger back a little bit and put a couple more really tight wraps on there. Keeping tension on your thread. We've now got this little wing sticking back. I'm going to grab about a third of the hair that's in the front and put a nice tight wrap through what's left. Grab the next third, put another wrap through there, and grab the rest of what's left and put a couple of wraps right in front of it, right behind the eye of the hook. At this point, I like to um, just leave all that stuff the way it is because it's easier to control. So now I'm going to build up a little bit of a tapered head right here just to make a nice transition. Uh, and at this point, because I've been wrapping my thread in a clockwise fashion, it's got a clockwise twist, I'm going to spin my bobbin counterclockwise. That's going to untwist the thread. It makes doing the whip finish a little bit easier. Uh, once it's done untwisting, I just stop it, put a whip finish right in front of that. One, two, three, four, five. Take my finger out, pull up tight, 
same thing, just pick a little gap in your scissors, push forward, clip the thread off. Now we want to take all these long pieces and pull them forward. Um, we're going to take all these long pieces and pull them forward, hold them forward with your left hand. And you want to set your scissors just above that, that angled eye and clip it off. And what that does is makes a little tiny head that looks like uh, the caddis head. So I'm going to have just a couple pieces there and clip those off. So now we got a little caddis head. We've got a tent shaped wing like a caddis does. It's got this hackle coming down just below the hook point. It'll skate along the surface like an egg laying caddis or it'll just float down the river. Uh, super effective, really good little dry fly called Elkhart Caddis.